Today we're going to take a look at how easy it is to improve security and visibility with Aviatrix. We're going to start with the Aviatrix console, which we call Copilot. And before we start this demonstration, the only thing that we've done is we've deployed the Aviatrix control plane from the marketplace and we have onboarded AWS accounts with the VPCs that we want to uh, secure. So the first thing that you're going to see when you log into Copilot is this getting started screen. And this is primarily focused on this egress use case. So we'll hit this start here because this is going to really accelerate our deployment time. So we'll start. Uh, we've got a VPC that's deployed. We've got a couple applications in this VPC to demonstrate how this works. You can see these applications um, have a couple different life cycles associated with them, a couple different tags associated with them. And they're reaching out to several different accounts, uh, both on the internet as well as across a transit gateway that's been deployed. And we have some uh, malicious traffic that we're going to be blocking as well. So ultimately, we want to show that uh, we start to get visibility into our egress traffic, which is our internet perimeter and a very important place to secure. It. And we can do that without disrupting anything that sits on the private network, keeping our existing architecture. So. When we start in Copilot, uh, you know we're, we're going through our secure egress workflow. So this particular VPC, um, we're going to call it our secure egress VPC. And the first step here is to deploy our Aviatrix gateways. Now you can see we've onboarded the account and uh, it's already detected all of the things that we have in our environment. We're going to deploy um, and uh, we're going to deploy our gateways and stage those in our VPC. And you can see that we can deploy multiple different gateways in a single VPC across multiple different availability zones so that we maintain that isolation, that high availability and optimized traffic flows. So once we hit go here, Aviatrix is going to reach out to the AWS console or the AWS uh, API, and it's going to automatically deploy uh, the Aviatrix gateways. So the gateways have finished deploying. And the next step that we're going to do is we're going to enable egress control on that particular VPC. So we'll select the VPC that we want to target and we'll hit enable. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to reroute traffic through the Aviatrix gateway as it egresses the VPC. This allows us to immediately get better visibility, better control and uh, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to enable a couple rules on our distributed cloud firewall for visibility purposes so that we can start to baseline the behavior in the VPC and get a good understanding of which domains it's reaching out to. Now, if you have egress traffic in the VPC, you should immediately start seeing things show up uh, here in this screen, but we're going to pop out of this wizard real quick and show all of the visibility that we can get uh, when we now have these gateways in place. So uh, we'll start by taking a look at topology view. So this is now looking at the VPC. It's showing all the information that we know about the network. We can not only see you know, the subnet information, we can also see the workloads that live in that subnet. So these are the same application workloads that are communicating out to the internet. And these will be important when we start to create our security policy. We can also start to initiate troubleshooting. We can go into any one of these gateways and we can do things like testing connectivity to a particular workload to see whether a port or protocol is open. We can look at the active sessions that are going through that workload. We can also do things like packet captures to actually start to troubleshoot information in the environment. Now, if we go down into our gateway detail tab here, you can actually go in and you can see additional network information like things uh, such as route tables. And you can go in and see a couple different things here. First off, you'll see that we do have our existing private network connectivity is still intact going through our transit gateway. Uh, but we can see when we look at our private subnets that the next hop for our internet egress route is now the Aviatrix gateway. Aviatrix is now managing this default route to ensure that we have proper failover and compliance for that traffic flowing through our, our new perimeter security control. Now, if we go down into our security section uh, and we look at the egress tab, we'll start to get information on all of the different domains that are in use. Now, this is really, really interesting. We can dive in and we can see on an individual VNet basis what that looks like. We can filter out based on a particular source IP address or even a source tag. 
And this is helpful for a number of different reasons, right? It's not just about forensics and security, but it also helps us understand, you know, egress uh, data transfer is something that uh, has a cost associated with it. And this granular layer seven visibility allows us to also get a good understanding of how the egress traffic is being consumed and allows us to help make decisions on how to potentially optimize that. Now, as we first started out, we haven't had any, any added any controls to the environment, but we do have our Threat IQ feature configured. Now, Threat IQ is constantly monitoring for traffic that is uh, initiated to known malicious IP addresses, things that have poor reputation scores. And this is one of the easiest ways to improve your security posture immediately is by enabling blocking in the Aviatrix, uh, in the Aviatrix platform for known malicious connections. So you can see we're looking for individual IP addresses. You can see this particular IP address is on a known, uh, you know, uh, has a poor reputation. Um, it's part of a known uh, botnet, and we can automatically block these connections for things like Tor, for command and control, and other things along those lines. So when we go to our workload, you'll see immediately, without configuring any real policy, we started to block this particular connection to a known malicious host. So the next step here is to start moving towards a zero trust policy. You can see the default rules that were configured by our getting started wizard allowed us to monitor traffic in the environment, but we are, uh, we're essentially allowing all of the same internet traffic. What we wanna do is we wanna move towards a posture where only the allowed egress domains uh, are in place. And so this is where we can go back to our getting started wizard and we can use our discovery tool. So this monitor mode has been baselining the domains that are in use. And what we can do directly from that is we can automatically generate what we call a web group. And a web group is a set of domains that are, uh, uh, are going to ultimately be allowed as a part of this particular e egress VPC. So we'll name our web group VPC1 web group. And you can see that it's detected four different domains that are in use. So we've got Azure, Amazon, Facebook, and Google. And uh, as a part of this, you know, we don't necessarily need Facebook to be uh, an, uh, an allowed domain. So we're actually gonna remove this from our web group. And if you continue through the web, uh, the wizard, this is automatically gonna apply this policy now to that particular VPC. So what you'll see pretty quickly here is that now our Facebook traffic is getting denied. Now let's go and take a, a more detailed view of this because this is really about getting started. Um, we'll look at our application. You can see all of a sudden uh, everything else continues to work as expected, uh, but our Facebook traffic is getting blocked. And if we go over to our distributed cloud firewall, you'll see we have a new group, uh, new rule in place for that particular VPC. Now, when we created this policy, one of the things that you'll see is that we have uh, a source of anywhere, but maybe I only want my development servers to uh, have access to Facebook blocked. So this is where we introduce the concept of a smart group. So smart groups are essentially um, intelligent groups that are based on tags and attributes from that particular from the cloud portal that allows us to dynamically select workloads based on their identity. And so I've got several different smart groups here. I've got smart groups for our individual VPC that's based on the name of the VPC, might be the name, the region, the account that it's a part of, allowing us to provide a very granular, very broad dynamic policy. And I have two additional smart groups here. We've got dev and we have prod. So dev is based on workloads that are in this particular region, as well as workloads that have this particular lifecycle tag as a part of it. And you can see currently this is, uh, is applying to our one workload here. If I removed one of these criteria or, or added a particular criteria, say we also want to capture prod, you can see now we have several different workloads that are a part of that. So we'll hit save on this and we're gonna go change our distributed cloud firewall policy. So um, what we wanna do is we wanna, uh, we wanna make a couple changes. We're gonna say, hey, if it, is, uh, if it is part of prod, we're gonna allow uh, all communications outbound. Um, and if it's part of dev, we are going to restrict it. So we're gonna say allow trusted traffic for dev. And uh, this is gonna be restricted by this particular web group and we'll save that policy. And now we're gonna add another rule here and we're gonna say allow all traffic prod and our source smart group for this scenario is going to be prod. 
and it's going to be the public internet. And for this one, we're gonna allow all traffic on TCP 80 and 443, and we'll log this as well. <clears throat> and we'll commit that particular policy. So now you can see um, prod is allowing all web traffic and we need to change our dev and dev should be blocking Facebook. So when we go back in and we look at the results from this, we'll quickly see that Facebook has recovered in production, but Facebook is still broken in dev. And this is based not on IP addresses, but tags and attributes. Now let's continue to do a few more advanced things. So you can see we're constantly logging and monitoring. You can go in and you can use this to troubleshoot and you can see uh, different components of the, uh, of the application. You'll also see um, that we have the ability to do some more advanced things with the policy. So if I go in here and I say, uh, you know, maybe maybe we want to do next generation firewall type vi uh, visibility and DNS is an interesting uh, traffic component for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a inspect DNS policy. And again, we'll say our source is any of our private networks. Our destination is the internet. And in this scenario, we want it to be our DNS port and protocol. And we're going to do one additional thing. We're going to add and enable intrusion detection. So intrusion detection inspects the packet itself, looking for known malicious behaviors. And uh, to demonstrate this, what we're going to do is we are going to launch a simulated attack. So I have a, a workload in this particular environment. Um, it has the ability to launch some uh, malicious traffic on demand. And so we're gonna use number five, which is an attempted connection to Tor. And we're detecting that connection based on a DNS request. So we'll kick that off. So if we go back to Aviatrix and we look at our tab detected intrusions, you'll now see that we have a, uh, an indicator here uh, where we're reaching out to uh, Google DNS and we are trying to query for a Tor domain, right? So this is much beyond IP address. This is actually diving into the packet, looking for known malicious behaviors and detecting things like command and control. And so with all of these things together, right, we can, uh, you know, again, the, the process to deploy this incredibly simple. All we did was we onboarded the accounts, we deployed the control plane, onboarded the accounts, we started um, uh, redirecting traffic through the gateways. We immediately gathered uh, additional visibility and control into all of the connections that are flowing through the uh, Aviatrix gateways, as well as started to apply basic security controls with blocking known malicious uh, activity. Uh, we moved our, our VPC into a zero trust posture with an explicit allow list of domain names and we started detecting advanced attacks uh, with deep packet inspection and intrusion detection.